Dr. Schultz, today we're going to be talking about PSMA and how it works in factors of treatment and people deciding what treatment is best for them. One of the biggest topics that we've talked about when it comes to PSMA, and Dr. Kwan has talked about this quite a lot, is lutetium. So first of all, can you explain what a PSMA scan is and review that for the audience, but then also talk about lutetium and this new treatment that we have on the market? The reason you want to talk about both of those together is they utilize uh, similar technology. And uh, it's breakthrough technology because these scans pick up a unique marker on the surface of the cancer cells called PSMA or prostate-specific membrane antigen. And this um, is not totally unique for prostate cancer, but it's close to unique for prostate cancer. So with these scans, people can find prostate cancer anywhere in the body, whether it's in the prostate or in the lymph nodes or the bones. And it does it with much more precision than anything we've had previously. So picking up cancer at earlier stage is very desirable because we have uh, so many treatments and they work better against earlier stage disease. Also, knowing where the cancer is is critically important in terms of uh, if there are multiple spots, we're going to use systemic therapy. If there's only a few spots, maybe we'll use, treat it like oligometastatic disease with spot radiation. So it helps design the whole protocol for how you want to proceed with therapy. Lutetium is a very powerful radioactive agent that, um, because it's hooked to a PSMA antibody, uh, swims around in the blood and finds the cancer and radiates it directly. So it's like a smart bomb that circulates through the system and finds cancer and kills it wherever it encounters it. So PSMA to find out where the cancer is, lutetium to treat where the cancer is. So when they're treating, are they using a, a PSMA scan to see where the cancer is before and then they re receive lutetium and then they check with another PSMA scan after the treatment to see that it's worked? It's a very plausible thing to do. The uh, there are some types of prostate cancer that don't have PSMA, and so it's always good to check before proceeding with lutetium, check with a PSMA PET scan to make sure that the cancer has PSMA on its surface. And so, uh, so that would always be the first step. Does the cancer t have a PSMA molecule on its surface? And you would confirm that with a PSMA PET scan. And of course, you'd also confirm that there are enough spots to justify lutetium. Lutetium does circulate through the whole body. If there's only a couple of metastatic sites detected, then uh, spot radiation or beam radiation would be a, a more appropriate approach than lutetium. So how often are you seeing lutetium work in patients? We've seen lutetium now for a couple of years because it was available overseas. And the type of people that were getting treated usually didn't have any other treatment options. So when you're talking about those very serious types of prostate cancer, my my experience is that about a third of the patients have a really dramatic benefit. About a third of the patients, it helps, but it doesn't cause uh, dramatic regression. And, and maybe another third, it doesn't seem to work that well. So if someone's going to have a PSMA scan in order to check for cancer and see where it is in the body, and then see after treatment if you know the cancer has been hopefully taken care of by the lutetium, are both of those usually covered by Medicare? Yes. Medicare has been very generous in covering um, PSMA PET scans in pretty much anyone with a diagnosis of prostate cancer. So. That's been very welcomed. Uh, a lot of the uh, private insurances so far in my experience have been pushing back. Some of them are covering it for relapse disease. Some aren't even covering it. Um, so hopefully that'll come along more quickly. You had mentioned that lutetium is for people who typically don't have a lot of treatment options. But if it's working so well, why isn't having a PSMA scan and lutetium like the first step that someone would take if they do have metastatic cancer versus going through other treatments before? When new products come on the market, they're always studied in very advanced disease. The pharmaceutical companies want to get a, a mortality endpoint, and that's how they can get their product to market quickly. So right now, um, PSMA-based um, lutetium therapy is uh, approved for people that have become hormone resistant and who have had previous chemotherapy such as Taxotere. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're super advanced, but in many cases they are. The um, idea of using an effective treatment at earlier and earlier stages is a basic principle of oncology, and it often turns into being a much uh, more effective way to use the treatment. Uh, I'm sure studies will proceed to try and confirm that with lutetium. Historically, I've just assumed that it will work better at earlier stage, but there are, might be a little pushback for a couple reasons. One is that 
when they inject lutetium, you do have radiation all over your body. Number two is that you can get some lingering effects on the bone marrow or the immune system, which would be undesirable. And number three, we have other modalities for if there's only a couple of spots, why not just treat those with beam radiation and, uh, and limit the exposure of the body to radiation. So there will be studies in uh, looking at giving lutetium as an adjuvant. That means, uh, say someone with oligometastatic disease has a couple of spots and you radiate them, maybe give some hormones. Should we get, also give a, uh, an injection of lutetium to go after any microscopic disease that we're not aware of? And that might be a good strategy, but it's a brand new form of therapy. So I'm not 100% sure that that will pan out as a benefit, but it might. In a previous video, you had talked about that if somebody had had hormone therapy, they were wondering if it's okay after their first injection to get a PSMA scan. So, and you were saying that yes, because even with the hormone therapy, it actually could affect those spots and give off more of that antigen. Would that same thought process work with lutetium? Would the possibility of hormone therapy affecting the lutetium and the rate of being able to recognize the disease? It is possible uh, because uh, PSMA expression on the surface of the cancer cells is what attracts the PSMA uh, molecule, which is what lutetium uses to get there. So. Uh, it is possible that there's uh, going to be synergy between hormone therapy and lutetium. Uh, those are uh, one of a number of different lines of research that need to be pursued. Anytime we get a brand new treatment that works independently well in very advanced cancer, we are talking about a powerful tool that could be repurposed uh, in used in combination with other effective agents, sometimes with a synergistic effect. And this, of course, is what's been discovered with the uses of early hormone therapy, first and second generation hormone therapy with taxotere in early metastatic prostate cancer, that you can prolong survival dramatically by using these things in combination. Lutetium may turn out to be that way. We don't have the studies yet to confirm that. Thank you for mentioning that because I think that patients often get frustrated with the concept of having to do so many treatments before they may get to lutetium, but if there's a possible benefit to those treatments before, that makes a lot of sense. Yes, and there's also the cost. Lutetium is being covered by Medicare and by other insurance companies, but it is a very pricey product and the access to it uh, for uh, coverage of earlier stages will have to be proven that it really does benefit people before insurance companies are going to start covering it. So we've talked about the possibility of getting a PSMA scan after lutetium has been administered to make sure that it worked. Is there a certain PSA threshold that would trigger a PSMA scan or would it be a certain amount of time after the treatment? Well, it's interesting that now that we have PSMA PET scans, I'm kind of surprised to see doctors still ordering CAT scans and bone scans. Uh, the use of scans to determine how well cancer is reacting has been standard fare for in, in metastatic disease for 20 or 30 years. PSA is also an effective metric, but PSA, as, uh, when prostate cancer gets very advanced, sometimes is not as accurate. And it is important in advanced prostate cancer to do both PSA and a scan. In the past, it used to be a CAT scan or bone scan, but now I think it's PSA plus a PSMA PET scan. We'll do scans as frequently as every three to six months in patients that are on therapy to confirm that they're responding and uh, to try and determine their their status. And it's not something we want to be guessing about how well treatment is working because if, uh, if some treatment is underperforming, we want to be able to switch to a new treatment and, uh, and you know, keep pushing the cancer back. It's a, it's a constant battle against these advanced cancers, and uh, there's no point in um, sitting around and waiting to see what happens. Uh, what we want to do is we want to continue effective therapy as long as it's tolerated and uh, as long as it's uh, continuing to benefit the patient, and then after that we want to uh, to switch to a new treatment if we're not seeing the, the results that we want to see. What should the PSA look like after lutetium has been administered? Well, typically we do expect a PSA decline, and as far as I know, uh, the usual metrics are 50% uh, decline in PSA from starting point is a sign of benefit, but even greater declines are uh, an indication of uh, even more benefit, 80% decline, 90 99% declines in PSA predict long-term outcomes uh, quite well. And so we want to uh, match a PSA decline with an improvement in scans. And when we're seeing improvements in both PSA and scans, then we can be confident we're on the right track.
Thank you so much for watching this video on lutetium and PSMA. We understand that these are new technologies and a lot of questions have been coming to us, so we wanted to help clarify that. Please remember that you can reach out to the PCRI helpline if you need specific questions answered. We're always here for you. We understand that this is a very um, intricate journey and that there are a lot of details going through the process of insurance and getting these scans and having the treatment. It's a lot. But please remember that it's so important for you guys to do your research and being here with this channel please subscribe we have new videos coming out every week and if you would like to you know support us financially we are a 501c3 nonprofit. Um, you can visit pci.org forward slash donate or click the link below and help support our videos thank you so much for watching and i hope you have a great week